tell us how you really feel. TGIF, happy Friday, everybody. Thanks for joining us here on First Take. Molly Karam here with you. Skip Bayless is in New York. Stephen A. is in Philly. Gentlemen, good morning. What's up? Stephen A. Smith, you know, for once, it might be good that you're actually whatever miles you are away from me and we're not across from each other at the desk because I think this is about to get heated. Well, I think you need to understand and the American public needs to recognize that you're not in Bristol today, which is where you usually are, <laughs> because you were banned. You were banned <laughs> from Bristol headquarters due oh. to, this, due to the, your, the idiotic arguments that you were making oh, uh, really? just yesterday. Uh, everybody I, knows that. So they ESPN's told you they told you you're you. allowed to oh. show up on the air. They showed you you're allowed to show up on the air, but you weren't allowed in the studio today. I think we all know why. Mm. Yeah, the truth is, I'm back in my town, New York City, and you're down there. And where is it, like New Jersey or Philadelphia? I don't know where you are. It's my second home. It's Philadelphia. City. Philadelphia. I'm actually allowed Good. in two places. Enjoy. You're not. Mm. But go ahead. The city of brotherly love. I'm not feeling a lot of brotherly love right now. But let me say, yeah. you both look very no. handsome today, looking clean. I'm liking that no tie look there with the the all blue and all black. So we will get into the big NFL games. Manny Pacquiao says he's in talks with Floyd Mayweather. And now we've heard from Matt Barnes. So we'll fill you in on the latest with the Derek Fisher situation. But first, what we were just alluding to, the other L.A. hoop story that everyone is buzzing about yesterday. Kobe Bryant being ranked number 93. Bryant laughed when asked if he heard comments from fans defending him. He said, yeah, I heard a couple of them. Don't need to defend that ranking. Nobody does, really. When pressed on what he thought of the ranking, Bryant said, please don't ask me about silly stuff like that. Now, after last year's ranking that placed Kobe at number 40 was announced, Bryant voiced his displeasure, saying, I've known for a long time they're a bunch of idiots, referring to the ranking as silly and laughable. So as you guys just heard yesterday, Stephen A. thinks this is ridiculous. Skip was actually okay with the ranking. Skip, what's your reaction to Kobe's response to all of this? Stephen A. Smith, because I do still love you like a brother. I'm going to try to take it easy on you today, maybe even easier than I took it on you yesterday. But I'm going to give you the cold, hard truth here about your man, Kobe Bryant. The truth is that Kobe's reaction yesterday was as silly and laughable as your defense of him was earlier yesterday on our show. I am sorry to say this, but look. I, I, I get it and I respect that Kobe Bryant is as supremely confident an athlete as we've had in any sport since Michael Jordan. And yesterday, his reaction, or last evening, his reaction was predictably confident to the point of arrogant. And Stephen A., I understand how much you love you some Kobe Bryant. And I understand and, and I, would, I could almost predict how knee-jerk, emotional, overreactive, you were yesterday out of love and support of your man, Kobe Bean Bryant, the Black Mamba. I'm sorry, the Mamba is no longer the Mamba. He hasn't been the last three injury-plagued years, and he will not be coming up this year. And to his point last year, when he called this panel a bunch of idiots, we are talking about ESPN's basketball forecast panel. It's made up of ESPN analysts and writers, researchers, and editors, 101 of them. And they're all a bunch of idiots, Kobe, seriously. The object of this poll is a forecast to, to predict how much a player will contribute this coming year, not five or eight or 10 or 12 years ago, this coming year to how many games his team will be able to win. And it factors in, obviously, this player's quality of play, and it projects how many minutes he will actually be able to play. So, given all that, would you believe that the real plus-minus numbers, according to Royce Webb, who's our director of content analytics at ESPN, the real plus-minus uh. numbers for Kobe Bryant added into how many minutes he does project, how few minutes he projects to play, actually ranked him as the 163rd best player or most valuable player in the National Basketball Association. Think about that, 163. But out of respect to what Kobe used to be, this panel, these editors, these writers got together and decided, hey, 
let's give him a break here. So they ranked him 93rd. They, they moved him all the way up from 163rd, which the numbers screamed that he should be, to 93rd, just because he used to be Kobe Bean Bryant, the Black Mamba. So we look at the last three years, and he ranked, uh, going into the year, 25th, then 40th, then now 93rd. And I was told last night by some of the editors that each of the last two years, he has failed to even live up to those projections, that they, they overrated him going into each of the last two years at 25th and 40th. So I'm going to remind you once again, we're not trying to rank his box office appeal. We're not trying to rank his five ring legacy. We're not trying to rank how popular or, or how awe-inspiring Kobe has been throughout his career. It's simply the numbers predicting how much he will add to his team, and it predicts that he will add about two wins this year for the L.A. Lakers. I rest my case, and more importantly, I rest ESPN's panel's case. Well, you're entitled to rest ESPN's panel's case, and I understand that, but as far as I'm concerned, it's just a glaring glaring acknowledgement that we have some people in this company that don't know enough about basketball. I don't care what you have to say. I don't care what they have Lord. to say. I know what I've seen with my own two eyes, and I know what I've seen in comparison to what exists in the NBA. I get into, I take into account everything that you said in all seriousness. I don't know why you're mentioning some of those names that you'd mentioned about the statics, you know, statistics and the statisticians and the analytics. And nobody cares about that as far as I'm concerned. When you're giving out the poll, why don't you put the names of each person that came to that conclusion sure and then let them be to. front and center and come talk to me because chances are ain't nobody going to want to hear what they have to, to say. Not after a poll names. like that. Well, all right, that's fine. And I'm telling you, I'm dismissing 101 names. I don't care what they have to say. It's, 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 it's nonsense to me. It makes absolutely no sense. Anybody with two eyes and something close to 2020 vision can see that that's absolutely ludicrous. And you're not taking an abundance of things into consideration. Of course, you want to sit there and say, well, Kobe only adds about two more wins. Well, why is that? Could it be that he's in the West? Could it be that his teammates there, I say, are a bit subpar? Could it be that when you consider San Antonio and Oklahoma City and the, and the reigning champions, Golden State Warriors, and the Los Angeles Clippers and the Houston Rockets? I mean, when you look at those teams alone, those five teams alone, we didn't even take into account some of the other teams. It, 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 it's obvious why it's going to be a tough go round for Kobe Bryant. Because he no longer has Shaq and Robert Ory and Ron Harper. And, and even even though they didn't win the championship that year, Carl Malone and Gary Payton and those boys at, uh, uh, by his side. You know, I'm not saying that all of those guys for the Lakers are scrub. I'm not trying to disrespect them. Louis Williams, Brandon Bass, even Roy Hibbert to some degree, I think will make solid contributions. But this is the Western Conference. And the teams are loaded. We all understand that. So when you sit there and you say that about Kobe, you know what? It's Kobe, it's, it's Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant on one team. It's Chris Paul, Blake Griffin, and DeAndre Jordan on another team. It's LaMarcus Aldridge joining Tim Duncan, Amano Ginobili, and Tony Parker on another team. The list goes on and on when you look at the West. It's, rare, it's James Harden on a mission to prove that he's deserving of leaving MVP honors. With Dwight Howard, there's no scrub, and he's got something to prove as well because he's heard the, the stuff that people have been chirping about him in the offseason. So many different things to point to, the Dallas Mavericks and what they've got to prove because of what has transpired with them in this offseason. Having Wesley Matthews come over there along with others, understanding that he's not fully healthy or he may not be, we don't know yet. All of those things are things to think about. If Kobe Bryant was in the Eastern Conference, what would he do? If Kobe Bryant was to have a better teammate or a better slew of teammates, what would he do? Talk to the coaches who know something about basketball. They not only brag and boast about this the, the killer inside of him, the fact that he can shoot, the fact that he can take you, you know, he can take anybody, he can break down anybody. They talk about his football, he, they, they talk about his footwork, they talk about his basketball IQ, they talk about how knowledgeable he is about playing this game. Is Kobe Bryant what he used to be? Skip, we don't know that. It remains to be seen. The last two years, he only played 41 games. He came back for 2013, 2014. Skip, he played six games. He, came, he shot 42%. He came back 
and he played, what, 35 games? Okay, and then he shot like 37% over the course of those 35 games. But he had essentially been out a year and a half to almost two years before he came back and played those 35 games. The previous eight seasons that he played in L.A., with the exception of one 43% shooting from the field in one year, the other seven, he shot 45% or better. This is the Black Mamba we're talking about here. And I'm not trying to sit there and say that he should be mentioned in the same breath as a Russell Westbrook or Kevin Durant and guys like that because they're younger and just as elite. But to sit there and say that there are 92 players better than Kobe Bryant, I applaud once again his decorum. I applaud his presentation. I applaud the fact that he's cool and is appropriately dismissive of such idiocy. And even though I'm not going to call out my colleagues because I'm very, very proud to work where I work, I consider this poll idiotic. I have nothing to do with it. And anybody that sits there and says, well, ESPN's poll said, just make sure you emphasize that Stephen A. Smith, or as you love affectionately call me, Stephen A. Smith, has absolutely, positively nothing to do with this poll. They didn't ask me. They didn't consult with me. Not that they have to. They did what they did. I have nothing to do with this. I am separate and apart from this because if there's one thing I know is basketball, and there's no way in hell that there are 92 players in the world better than Kobe Bryant. I don't even think there's 92 players in the NBA better than Charles Barkley right now. And he just came off a of hip surgery. I mean, give me a break. Oh, it's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. Stephen Naismith, the inventor of basketball as we know it today. Let me ask you this. Go with that. Are there not two ends of the basketball floor? You play offense, then you have to play this thing called defense. Am I right well, about that? What's your point? What's your point about that? My point is, last year, the numbers said Kobe Bryant was the 25th worst defender in the entire NBA. And by the way, speaking of offense, last year, for the 172 players who took 500 or more shots, 172 players, 500 or more shots, only one player shot a worse percentage in the entire NBA, Trey Burke of the Utah Jazz. That's the Kobe B. Bryant who used to be the Black I, I'm not, hold on, hold on. That's, that's not a fair argument because I concede to you that the last two years haven't been ideal. But he only played six games one year and less than half the games the next because he was recovering from injury each time. And anybody knows, Skip, particularly when you are offensive, an offensive-minded player, that when you're healing from an injury, you're usually going to take the breaks on a defensive end of the floor. That's what you're going to do because your success, particularly when you are box office like Kobe, is predicated on what you do offensively. If Kobe Bryant had went out there and shut down folks but couldn't score a damn basket, we would sit there and say, he's done. I'm not saying that their defensive stats and what have you aren't accurate. I'm saying they're not taking the intangibles into consideration. And what I find so insulting about what you say and what anybody who thinks like you says and what this ridiculous, idiotic, stupid poll says is that y'all are not taking those things into account for somebody like Kobe. Kobe Bryant doesn't cheat the game. Kobe Bryant, go, he ain't perfect. I think he could do a better job of ingratiating himself with his teammates sometimes. We all understand that. We understand that some of the times, you know, he gets hungry. He wants to get fed. The players are turned off by it. We've heard all of those things from players over the course of time, privately or publicly. But in terms of his skill set and what he has meant to the game of basketball and what he does on the basketball court, you know good and damn well that if we're talking about Kobe Bryant here, and he's taking plays off, or he ain't doing what he's capable of doing, you know that that has a lot to do with him trying to find his rhythm, get his health back, and all of that other stuff. This is not some typical player, Skip Bayless. I'm talking work ethic now. This is not some typical player. Even you have to admit, there is nobody that cares more 
about the game oh. and about being great Com completely at it agree. than Kobe no, Bryant. No. So that's the point. No, 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 no. No, not, not even beginning to suggest that. We're talking about what will your body allow you to do at 37 coming off multiple serious injuries. Can you suddenly snap back to being one of the best defensive players as about. he was for about 12 straight years? No, he can't. He, he's, he's not going to be capable. No, that's, you no, no, you no, no, see no, no. what's happened over no, the last three years. That's, that's fair. That's Go fair ahead. if that's what they're saying. What I'm saying is they're talking like even if Kobe Bryant is healthy, because he's 37 years of age, he's not what he's used to be. He's done. I'm saying to you, tell me that you don't believe he's going to ever be healthy again, and I'll concede that because that's possible. Don't talk to me like if Kobe Bryant is 100% that because he's 37, Father Time is here and he can no longer do damage in the NBA and there are 92 players better. If Kobe Bryant is Stephen healthy, a. even at the age of 37, he deserves far more respect than that. That's all I'm saying. Okay, but seriously, seriously, after a human being has suffered that many serious injuries, at that advanced age, how healthy can he get? Even if, if he gets to, by his today's standards, 100% healthy, it will be about 70% of what he used to be because I'm, they have I'm, taken a toll on his body. And, and, and I'm telling you that at 70%, because of his ability to shoot a perimeter shot, combined with the lack of basketball IQ, most players in the NBA have, not the superstars, but most second, third, third tier players, there is no weight on earth. There are 92 players better than Kobe Bryant. That is ridiculous. Okay, here's the problem. And Here, here's I what believe you're the avoiding. poll here's... is embarrassing. No, uh-uh. Here's the truth, Stephen A. What do your eyes tell you over the last three years? Kobe Bryant has become, at this late stage and age, not much more than a jump shooter. Is that fair? He scores so, very few points of his points in the paint. Ray anymore. Allen's a jump shooter too. Just don't you want him? He's not capable. Okay? Ray Allen's but a jump shooter too. Is, don't you want he's him? Become, wait a second. He's become an extremely high volume, low percentage distance jump shooter. That's we'll not a recipe we'll for great success. He, the we'll six see. of the last eight years, he's led this league in shots attempted. He's going to jack up the and basketball. He's made a lot of we all know that. We accept that. He's not going to make that many of them. He's going to hurt his team that way, in many cases, more than he helps it. I'm sorry. Okay. Guys, right. we got right. to... You'll see. <laughs> We got to agree to disagree here on Kobe's ranking of 93rd, the 93rd best player in the NBA. This, of course, is his 20th season as a Laker, the most seasons for any player for any team in NBA history. Pretty impressive. Now to another vet, though, who's getting it done in his 18th year in the league. This 